parti d'unité du peuple cachemiri pour un petit, une petite leçon de géographie euh, le Cachemire se trouve entre l'Inde et le Pakistan, il y a deux côtés. Euh, depuis 1900, après la division du continent asiatique sous la colonisation britannique, et le, il y a deux territoires, une partie qui est occupée par le Pakistan, le Cachemire, et qui a la région qui est administrée par Azad et il y a le Yamu qui, fait, qui est administré par l'Inde. Et donc, M. Chokat s'est engagé depuis quelques années, il y a 13 millions de Kashmiri pour le droit de ces personnes, leur protection entre les deux grandes puissances. Et il va nous parler un peu des défis auxquels leur société confrontée et je vous ai dépeint. Seulement en Asie, il n'y a que huit femmes dignitaires. Ce qui n'est qui rien du tout, c'est comme une goutte d'eau dans l'océan. Et je présente toutes mes condoléances à M. Kachmiri. Comme vous le savez, il y a eu plus de 1300 personnes victimes au Pakistan qui est sous l'eau depuis le mois de juin dernier. Et les principales personnes touchées par euh, ces inondations, ce sont les femmes et les enfants. Ce sont les femmes et les enfants qui ont perdu leur maison, qui ont tout perdu. Et je le remercie pour son engagement. Et Monsieur Chokat, et ça fait presque 20 ans qu'on se connaît et qu'on participe ensemble depuis l'ancienne commission des droits de l'homme. Il est toujours là, chaque session, pour essayer de présenter la situation. Il y en a qui se battent pour l'autodétermination des femmes et d'autres pour l'indépendance du Kashmir. Et il va nous présenter la situation actuelle auquel le pays est confronté. Et nous avons et également Mme Concession Vage. Mme Concession présente ses excuses. Normalement, elle devrait intervenir par vidéoconférence, mais comme il y a certaines mesures qui ne nous permettent pas, on est obligé de respecter les règles des Nations Unies. Et j'espère que très prochainement, elle sera présente parmi nous. Elle est chef d'entreprise en Angola. Et il y a le docteur Ndombo aussi. Ndombo, il n'est pas ici. Thank you very much for your presence and participation. I thank you, Mr. Ladies and gentlemen, before I say something about today's topic, I must pay my gratitude to Madame Nashali and her organization to organize such an event on a important topic. The women the women participations in politics. And also, I you, Ms. Bureau for the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, today's topic is very important. Although the people listen from Afghanistan to Africa and many countries. There is no doubt about it that some of the narrative is against the women, like in the Islamic countries where the rulers, the clerics are not ready to recognize the equal rights 
or gender equality. And most of the women face worst kind of discrimination in that world, which is called the Muslim world. Especially I belong to that area, which is administered by Pakistan, although the state of Jammu Kashmir before 1947, it was an independent country. But unfortunately, in 1947, it was divided, forcibly divided. And now our state is divided into two parts. And we have some kind of uh, revolutions caused by the United Nations Security Council. And the young city has some roles. But unfortunately, the world community is failed to address. And uh, come out of from the security zones or the conflict zones. And we are still living in a conflict zone where the web, men has no right, you can imagine what kind of the rights of the woman is there. There is rule of might, military is all things. Even the legislators has compromised with the military because the whole political system is supervised by the military journals. And even in, 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 in a theory, when a, a prevailed faith recognizes that women is, has less rights as compared to men, then you people can imagine what kind of a situations in those areas and what is the problem facing the people who believe the gender equality and a political party who believes secularism, democracy, equality. Our party is a United Kashmir People's National Party, is a secular political party which believes democracy and gender equality. And many clerks issue many fatwas, but we don't mind because that is their job and our job is to protect the life, liberty, and property of the peoples irrespective they are belonging to which faith, whether they are Hindu or Muslim, the Christians are Sikh. And the women, woman is woman. So we believe that woman should not treat it on his color or on his gender or on her faith. It she should be recognized as equal partner of the society. And uh, unfortunately, the people who lived in a conflict zone where there is no rule of law, and you have listened to the history of Afghanistan, where the mullahs, the militants, the extremists, they ruled there. And it is unfortunate for the world community, they are also looking and, and, and compromising with those who are not recognizing the human rights. Like in Afghanistan, there is a chaos. And every person, whether it's woman or man, have no say in the society. Only the gun defines their faith. The same is the case in Kashmir. It is the state who promoting terrorism, who promoting uh, communalism, who actually give all the support to those who actually divided the society on the basis of religion. They did not honor our culture. They have no any idea of our history. So that's why it's that part which is more needed to what community should look upon that. And it is the responsibility of the United Nations Human Rights Council that they sh they sh she should send the fact finding mission and see how the women in this country area are facing worst kind of 
discrimination and there are many women who were raped by the military or officials and nobody is listen there is no any court to take cognizance against this kind of uh, heinous act because there is a military might in, in, in our area which is uh, uh, known as Pakistani administrative Kashmir that in my opinion Unfortunately, it is not polite, but it is occupied, very much occupied. And the, which, uh, the, the constitutionally, we are not part of Pakistan. But in, in Pakistani constitutions, according to the clause uh, 1, it is a disputed territory. Pakistan officially declared that the state of Jammu Kashmir is a disputed territory. But unfortunately, then, the question of natural resources, it is not disputed. When the peoples demand some kind of rights, then it is disputed because it is very easy for the ruler that oh, we cannot provide this, we cannot provide you uh, clean drinking water, we cannot uh, allow you to use your water resources for the irrigation purposes, we cannot uh, treat women uh, as, as uh, equal because you, you belong to the territory which is disputed. But we are the people, we are not disputed. We are the human beings. So we should treat as human beings. Our women should be treated as women and they should allow to take part in the politics. Only few uh, privileged class women, they, they are, it's, 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 it's a mockery of the administrations just to be fooling the world community that all oh, women are taking part in the politics. But unfortunately, the peoples who are real representative of that area and who know what kind of miseries the women and men are facing, they are not allowed to take part in the elections. They are not taking part in the uh, any any other, even until and unless the persons cannot take out that I am loyal with one hand, Pakistan declared that this area is a disputed territory. It is not part and parcel of the Pakistani area. But the other hand, when I would like to take part in politics or in elections, I, I am not allowed to take part until and unless I will not give the oath that I am the loyal citizen of Pakistan. Whereas Pakistan, any constitution declared, not declared me, as a citizen of Pakistan. So, so it's a very complex situation and uh, our area is a very uh, victim area. The, we have no any constitution guarantee. Our own resources are colonized and uh, even we are not allowed to use our own water for the purpose of irrigation. So I think that area is needed to your kind attentions, especially our women. And this today topic is very important for the women movement. And we endorse that women is a very important part of a human society. And whenever the woman is not allowed to take part in politics or in any field, the society will not be progress. It is necessary that women should get the opportunity and space in, to play a, a bigger role in the society will progress. But when you ban the women, when you are not allowed the women to take part in, in politics or in every, every field, then in my belief, the society will not progress. And that's why in whole Muslim world, you can say that every, every state, maybe according to natural resources, they are rich, but according to technology, they are much backward. According to the constitutional rights, they are backward. The democracy, there is not such a country we can present her as examples that, oh, look on that country, which is Muslim, but the democracy is very excellent. You cannot present a single country where there is a rule of law. 
whether it's Pakistan, whether it's here or here, whether it's, whether it's, it's Gulf states, or even the Turkey. So this situation is very uh, complicated and worse regarding the human rights. I think that area need your kind attention. I thank you very much. I will not take uh, too much time because since nine o'clock you are here and listening mm -hmm. many speeches. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is, uh, although very difficult in a society where the officially system is corrupt, the people can support real victims. But of course, the world community is looking at and they also declare their contributions. And it is uh, very important to, to help those people who are living at this moment under the sky. They have no house, they have no uh, foods, and even uh, their houses and their land, everything has been destroyed. So they need immediate attention of the world community. And other hands, we have a little bit constrained that when our the constitution was abrogated and the martial law was imposed on the part of Pakistan. The United Nations never ever so quickly enough. I think it is more, uh, and, and the system of the corrections. So I think the United Nations should ask Pakistan to a to, 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 uh, system of transparency and account accountability should be imposed so that the, the state institution should be transparent. And all those people at these junctures, where, where when there are is a half of a Pakistan is under flood under water, at least they should release all those enforced disappeared peoples, especially from Sindh and Balochistan. And it is the court, Islamabad High Court, also asked the present government to release them. But uh, the government, because uh, in Pakistan, the deep state, the military general is more powerful. That is that is why that in in forced disappearances still continue, and uh, nobody is uh, in positions to intervene. Neither the force affects force. So I think we should, we should uh, also ask the United Nations to sympathize with those families and the women who are protesting, who are sit in different uh, press clubs and uh, the people that they should uh, uh, ask Pakistan to release all those people or if anybody who is involved in any or, 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 or violate the Pakistani constitution at, at least they should brought into the justice, into the court of law. Disappearances and missing and sent to the solitary confinement is not a solution. I thank you. Thank you. Yes.